we will discuss the race review. What an absolutely epic Grand Prix. Pierre Gasly taking the victory. Sam, if you wouldn't mind, just taking us through your emotions as we were entering the end of that race. Well, <laughs> um, honestly, what are we even doing here? Oh, I'm not out in the street like it's the World Cup a couple of years ago, driving around screaming the national anthem of Italy out my car and saying the British one. That was honestly one of the best moments I've seen in racing for a very, very long time. Um, so many reasons for happiness. Alpha Tauri, 100% deserved. Their car was set up brilliantly today. They played the strategy blindingly well. Of course, you don't know there's going to be a red flag, but they started and pitted at the, the, just the perfect time. Brilliantly done from Pierre Gasly and the team. Um, Carlos Sainz, you know, good for him, getting a second place in Goat Stroll, rounding out the podium. I, I don't think I've had that reaction to a, a race end, maybe since, we ha- maybe since before Germany, actually. I don't think even Germany, with that craziness, gave me the same reaction as what that did. Um, Pierre Gasly has had such a strange, like, character arc whilst being in Formula 1. He's had such a strange development, you know, coming in, impressing massively uh, at Toro Rosso when it was Toro Rosso, getting moved up to Red Bull, the absolute stick that, yet yeah, we gave him, the rest of the F1 community gave him, everyone, including his own team, gave him, that shunted him back down. And now Pierre Gasly has won as many races as Red Bull had this season. Just open the door, hold on. What's, oh, there's a sink. Let that one in there. Because uh, you need to settle a little bit at how good Pierre Gasly has been this season. Uh, he's been pretty much my driver of the season so far. Anyway, other than Hamilton. Uh, the staffing's up there. But my God, has Gasly really turned a performance in that car. The fact that we obviously we lost uh, Antoine Hubert is incredibly close to Gasly, one of his closest friends. And now he gets to go and do this at Monza with an Italian team. Obviously, the scenes are just wonderful. I am ecstatic. It's like the rest of the F1 community said, can we have a race where Hamilton, Boss, Otto Verstappen aren't the podium? And Monza went, okay. And it happened. And it was brilliant. And we loved it. And I want it every week. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Do it again. Yeah, and that that redemption arc for for Pierre Gasly is quite incredible. You have to consider a year ago he's dropped by he's dropped by the Red Bull team after a very difficult first half of the season. Antoine Hubert dies at the very weekend that he appears for for the first time for uh, for Toro Rosso and now Alpha Tauri. And since that point, he's enjoyed not only his first podium and is now enjoying his his first win. Just an incredible comeback story. Harry, what what did you make of that Grand Prix? I would like to cast your minds back to the 2001 Italian GP. No McLaren finished. The highest Jordan was a 70-year-old man called Jean Alesi. In a Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> and then the highest Minardi was 13th and last by some unknown Spanish driver called Fernando Alonso. And then today, all three of them were on the bloody podium. What on earth has just happened? I mean, it's not even... Alpha Tauri's first time on top on that top step at Monza. They obviously just love it there. But um, yeah, I, I, Brund, Martin Brundle said a lot at the end of the race is the sort of race F1 needs. And it's right because sometimes we do have to endure slightly dull races, but then it's absolutely worth it for, for races like those because that is literally what F1 is all about. It's those underdog David beats Goliath moments, which this was. And it wasn't even just like one person on the phone. The whole, I mean, McLaren underdogs, they've had a couple of podiums now, but still they've had a tough few years. So this is another great result for them. And then the same for Racing Point too. That's a completely midfield podium, which you'd love to see. Um, and I would just like to send out my uh, personal thanks to Kevin Magnussen, because without him, none of this could have happened. You know, we we did our preview, um, our preview video and podcast as we always do, and I remember saying in that when we were predicting our poll one two three that I went a little bit too bold at Belgium, so I'm just going to tone it back for Italy because it will surely just revert back to Hamilton, Verstappen, and Bottas, and then that will be that. I've never been more happy to be completely and utterly wrong. Um, goodness me, that was such an epic Grand Prix. Um, I don't don't even know how to respond to it. Pierre Gasly, of course, he did get slightly fortunate due to the strategy. He pitted on the very lap that he needed to just before that safety car came out. And but but 
at that point, you still have to execute it. And he did. He managed that gap to Carlos Sainz so spectacularly well. Um, and just, I mean, shout out for Carlos Sainz because he must be going through what can only be a whirlwind of emotions right now because he's ended up with his best finish in Formula One history. Um, he's going to a team next year where he might not have a chance at a podium. At least that's how the lay of the land is looking at the moment. And he can't he can't be jubilant about it because he was so close to getting that first place. It was his first first real opportunity. So yeah, great. And and Lance Stroll obviously rounding out the podium. I, I was thinking back and I'll be interested to learn what you think about this and indeed people uh you know listening along and watching along on on youtube i think this might be the worst car to win a grand prix since giancarlo fisichella won for jordan back in 2003 i know obviously tor rosso won in 08 but the car was pretty handy i think it was slightly better then than what the alpha tauri car is now i think this could be the worst car to win a grand prix in about 17 years was just yeah, and I'll be interested to know if somebody thinks uh, a, a worse car has won since that point. But what an epic race. What an epic race. And the ironic thing is it was looking like it was going to be a bit of a dull procession after about 10, 15 laps. So, yeah, well done to Pierre Gasly and um, enjoy the moment. I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. Um, I mean, Sam, what, what did you... Do you about Lance Stroll here, because he ended up on the podium. It's his second career podium. But arguably, when he was starting from second place on that restart, and he got away with not having to take a regulation pit stop, we know how good he is at starts. Do you think this is a win thrown away for him? Oh, I mean, the racing point, okay, is not as strong as we thought it was. Let's get that out there. Yes, the car is definitely better than it has been in previous seasons, but it is not a regular podium finishing car that we said it was going to be after maybe the second or third race of the uh, the season. The car is good. And Lance Stroll at starts is one of the best in the field. I mean, I can't believe that Goat Stroll is actually one of the best at something, but he genuinely is one of the best starters in the field. And if you were ever going to have a perfect start, that was really the time to make it happen. Um, and it fell away from him. Now, the car we saw with Sergio Perez, you know, he could barely stay in front of Hamilton. He didn't even finish inside, you know, the top seven, whereas Stroll was the one up there fighting. Um, I take my hat off to Stroll for a very strong drive. And I think we've overestimated just how strong that car actually is. But it's not like the Alpha Tower is much better anyway. Yes, in a straight line, it seems to just be a little bit of a rocket for some reason. But Gasly did what he had to do. Sainz got a shifty on and did the right thing at the right time. And the radio came over at the McLaren team being like, you know, take your time, take your time. And he's like, no, I've got to get past Stroll. I've got to challenge the front. And he did the right thing because Stroll never really got close. Um, I was hoping that Stroll could have been closer to really make it spicy out of the top three there. I did expect a little bit more from Racing Point. But at the same time, this is their highest finish in that, and that current branding, in that current Racing Point team. This is their current highest finish. So, yeah, I, yes, they definitely had the chance to win it, but I'm not going to be too harsh on them. Lance Stroll's really come a long way. He scored the only podium they've got so far this season. He he beat Sergio Perez today. So yeah, I I am happy with how Racing Point turned out. Yeah, and obviously Lance Stroll deciding that the breaking point going into the Variante della Roggia is actually two meters after the corner happens, which was interesting. But he My at least God, recovered from that. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, I, I think the breaking point is just a little bit before where you think it is, Lance. Um, P3, Harry, for, for, for Lance Stroll, do, do you think that's a bit of a disappointment considering the position he was in? Uh, I think he's, well, I think he said he was a little bit disappointed with it. Um, I don't think the racing pub was particularly competitive this weekend. I know Checo qualified P4, um, but at races what we've seen in the past, well, they have been really competitive, like high-speed tracks like Spa and Monza. This new, this new pink Mercedes, whatever you want to call it, doesn't seem to be quite as quite as good. Um, yeah, I was so I thought because Stroll is so good at starts, I was convinced he was going to mug Hamilton off the line when he was literally lined up on the front row. So I think he'll be annoyed at the fact he didn't make the most of that. But um, look, I mean. He can't be too upset. It's not often that a podium comes around. And to be honest, I think that racing point should have been on the podium sooner this year. So I think they'll still happily take P3. And I don't think... I think I think the McLaren had the edge over them, hence why Sainz is in front. But, you know, he was faster than Norris in that 
second half of the race. So um, I don't think uh, Stroll can be too disappointed with it, to be honest. It's a tough one because it's likely going to depend how much he regrets this is going to be dependent on how good that racing point is going to become and how, you know, what Alf Aston Martin are like next season, providing he is there at the team racing. Um, I think it will be largely dependent on how many more opportunities he gets to win races because you don't get many of them. Um, you know, if, if you're in Hamilton's position or in Verstappen's or Bottas's position, yes, you get regular opportunities. But if you don't find yourself in one of those teams, then then these shock victories, they only come around once in the blue moon. Uh, you know, we, we don't know how the careers of Stroll and Gasly and Sainz will pan out, but it wouldn't shock me if for at least one of those three, this proves to be the only chance they ever get. So, you know, if Lance Stroll gets another race like this later in the season and takes a victory, it's, it doesn't really matter that much. And even if that happens next season, it doesn't matter that much. But if it turns out that the Aston Martin isn't as good as what the, they would hope it is next year, and if, you know, the the, the cost cap doesn't have the, the benefit that Racing Point and Aston Martin will hope, then, then maybe Lance Stroll rues this day because um, I really think he should have won this race. You know, he had a great opportunity. He was... He was somewhat fortunate that he was the only car that didn't pit. And if that was a call, by the way, by the Racing Point strategist, that is the best strategy call we've had in years. Um, I, have no, I have no idea if that's the case or not, but he, he was he was left in a great position. Like, like we've already said, his starts are so, so good. Um, and he really needed to take advantage of that when he had the opportunity. And and rather than he could have just held position and that would have been fine because obviously Lewis Hamilton's coming in at the end of that lap anyway. But conceding that position to Gasly uh, and then conceding the position to Sainz as well as a result of the error. And I, I think he understands as well. He's he's under no illusion that this is on him. This could have been his very victory. Um, hope, hopefully for his sake, he doesn't end up regretting it for a long time um, because it was a massive opportunity. I mean such a chaotic race it's almost very difficult to pick a driver of the day and worst driver of the day but we're going to do it anyway Sam driver of the day who are you going for well Pierre Gasly gets the driver of the day but uh and I don't need to explain why the man made my heart sore today it was genuinely wonderful seeing him stand on the top spot it was such a lovely redemption moment for him such a nice tribute to Antoine Hubert and a great moment for Formula One fans second place to that um Lewis Hamilton he absolutely dominated throughout the first half of the race. The red flag came. You know, it was a mixture of himself and a team call that got himself a penalty, which is a tricky one. You got caught out on that one. But then he proved that that car can overtake. He proved that he could take it to the rest of the field and get through them. You know, he was on a warpath and every single chance he got to make the move, he made the move and he got his way up there. And because of that, Bottas is still 47 points behind Lewis Hamilton. He gained 13 seconds to Bottas since the red flag period stopped after taking a, a penalty that cost him 31 seconds. Honestly, that was a fantastic turnaround, I think. I think that he has once again made the most of a terrible situation. But of course, Gasly for me takes the top spot. Harry, what about you, driver of the day? Yeah, I can't look past Gasly. Um, yeah, he they struck a bit of luck with when they pitted and when the red flag and safety cars came out. But, um, you know, he... They they beautifully executed the 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 hand of cards they were dealt, and they could have easily he could have easily dropped back and not and not won that race, but he did. I think there were potentially faster cards behind him that he didn't let pass. So yeah, it's got got to be Gasly for me. Um, I'm uh, as epic as Gasly obviously was. I'm going to disagree. I'm going to go Carlos Sainz as driver of the day, even though he couldn't get that last overtake done. Just because Carlos Sainz did a wonderful job before the red flag and before the safety car period, um, I, I think he would have finished P2 regardless uh, of whether that came out or not. He did a great job at the start of the race to to, to get ahead of Valtteri Bottas. Um, and he was comfortably quicker than Lando Norris in both stints. Um, he opened up that gap. Lando Norris was, was consistently defending from behind. Carlos Sainz was able to open up a few second gap. Like I said, I think he would have finished quite comfortably P2 if it weren't for for the red flag. Obviously, he has to contend with it anyway. He goes down to, I think, about P6 or P7. Um, he ends up making progress. He gets past Kimi Raikkonen and he gets past Lance Stroll. He was very clinical on both occasions. 
And he did a good job of eating into that gap that Pierre Gasly had. Ultimately, not quite there, but he did a good job of narrowing that down from four seconds to just a few tenths at the flag. So uh, as good as Gasly was, and I'll probably put him second place here, I'm going to say Sainz was driver of the day. And worst driver of the day, Sam. Ah, uh, this is tough. This is tough. Um, so many great performances. It's hard to look past two people. And it's the two people I seem to always be bringing up. And it is Bottas and Albon. Albon, who managed to hold off Lewis Hamilton for the longest amount of time out of all the cars that he cut through, which shows that that Red Bull did have some pace, was then stuck behind the Williams cars for the entirety of the second half of that race. He finished 15th. The only person behind him was Giovinazzi, who couldn't catch him due to the stop-go penalty and would have finished in front of him. So Verstappen retired. Albon theoretically finished last because the only reason Gio was behind was due to a penalty. Um, Bottas, yeah, he might have had a little bit of damage, but it just shows to me that he hasn't got that racing prowess to make something work. You need to capitalise. This is the kind of race that we literally discussed in our race preview Lewis Hamilton does not have a bad race often. And he didn't even have a bad race today. He was dealt a crap hand due to a penalty on a ruling that is really hard to follow. And it was a mistake by both himself and the team. And that is when you need to look at this and go, we are faster than every single car in front of us. Lewis Hamilton is in last place. How often do you hear the words, Lewis Hamilton is last and he's driving the car. He's still in the race. He's last and you can't even finish on the podium. That was your time to get back in this championship fight. And you didn't make it work. So I'm going to say, because his car was broken, that Bottas isn't just the worst driver of the day, and Albon is, but those two, they need to up their game. What say you, Harry? Worst driver of the day? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty much in agreement with Sam there. I think probably Bottas gets it for me. Um, yeah, I, I feel like his head just dropped after that start. It was an appalling start, again, all down to him. And... and uh, he was just kind of out of position and just got knocked about by all the other cars around him. But even then, he still has the fastest car on that track. Uh, he should have got his head down. I know they have cooling issues in that Merc, but yeah, he can't help what Hamilton does behind him on his on his you know comeback through the field. But on the evidence of Hamilton, that car can still cut through traffic. So Bottas should have been able to do the same. And yeah, sounds like he should have capitalised on a on a day when Hamilton. Didn't score many points. Um, yeah, but I didn't score many points either. And uh, yeah, that lead is only 47 instead of 50 now. Um, yeah, it's got to be Bottas. I just think just think his head dropped too much at the start of the race and he never he never reset from it. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to go for someone else. I think the worst driver of the day was Charles Leclerc. Um, yeah, the first stint he struggled with tyre wear. He lost, first of all, he lost the position to Kimi Raikkonen and couldn't keep up with him, which was disappointing. He he then struggles with tyre wear. As far as I'm aware, no one else did really, um, and he has to come into the pits very early. Um, and and then he and then he drops it. You know, when he was uh, when he was in a reasonable spot, and um, yeah, it was a pure driver error on, on Parabolica to go straight into the barrier. Obviously, great news that he ended up okay because it was an almighty hit. Um, but Charles Leclerc, yeah, struggled to manage the tyres on that first stint uh, and then had the crash. So I'm going to pick him. And um, what about, well, I, I, moment of the race, I guess it's difficult to look past one moment here. But Sam, what, what, what did you think of moment of the race? Well, it's, yeah, you say that. It's hard to look past that moment where Kevin Magnussen blocks the pit lane. I mean, <laughs> but equally, the moment with um, with Charles Leclerc hitting the barrier is as important because if we didn't have that red flag, a lot of those drivers wouldn't be in the place that they were regardless. We would have a safety car, yes, but the likes of Gasly would not be where they were at the start of that race. The likes of Stroll would not be where they were at the start of that race. They would have been passed by people. Um, and because of that Leclerc moment when he hits the wall, Hamilton has to serve his penalty the moment that the race restarts and he's got no time behind him. If, if he had managed to have a normal safety car period, they got going for a couple of laps and then he'd been given that penalty and then he's got another couple of laps before he can serve it. He might be able to rack out a 10 second lead. He might have only fallen back to maybe seventh or eighth and he could have possibly come back through, overtaken Bottas and been into the top four or five. Those two incidents there, it shows you how incredible it could be when just something sparks off a little something else. And now the biggest thing I think actually is when the commentators, Crofty, Brundle, whatever, we're saying we want a qualifying race, a reverse qualifying race. And 
I think they got themselves a little bit hyped up. But if it could create something as exciting as that, then I'm willing to give it a go. Whether it does, I don't know. But there's no harm in trying something different. No doubt we'll be having a discussion on that at some point. Um, moment of the race for you, Harry? Uh, yeah, I can't really look past K-Mag breaking down on the pit <laughs> bit entry. That that kind of changed the face of the race. And I know, as Sam said, obviously, Charles Leclerc's crash and the red flag changed it again. Um, but that was the catalyst for the complete carnage that in, ensued after that. Um, so, yeah, as I've said already today, Kevin... Thank you very much. You brought the box office to this race, as you always do. Yeah, box office Magnuson proving his worth there. Um, I'm going to slightly cheat because I'm going to pick a moment that happened just after the race finished. But for me, the the, the moment of, of the Grand Prix was when Pierre Gasly got out of his car. He celebrates with his team members. And then the amount of drivers that came over uh, and celebrated with him, the likes of uh, Romain Grosjean and, and Charles Leclerc all, all going over just to sort of offer their congratulations. I, I just thought that was a really epic moment. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick that. <laughs> 